Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about hyponatremia in neurosurgery, especially relating to trauma and subarachnoidal hemorrhages. Okay. So hyponatremia is a very common metabolic abnormality that is seen in our scenario. So mild hyponatremia means value less than 125 to 135, moderate is 120 to 124 and severe is less than 120 milli equivalents. So we essentially divide it into two categories based on water retention. If there is water retention or there is no water retention. If there is water retention, it means it is dilutional hyponatremia. Water is retained, diluting the sodium content. Okay. So uh, this happens in the setting of excess of ADH and that scenario is SIADH. So then this SIADH will lead on to water retention or water dilution and that will lead on to a hyponatremia okay so this is the scenario of SIADH now coming to no water uh, coming to water loss it is because of atrial natriuretic peptide or brain related natriuretic peptide and this will lead to excess loss of sodium sodium gets excreted and because of this there is hypernatriuresis and you get salt wasting so cerebral salt wasting syndrome is what is the characteristic of CSW. So now how can we differentiate between um, SIADH and uh, cerebral salt wasting syndrome? There are two things to remember here, two very important things which are we need to estimate the volume, we need to estimate the volume of loss or the intravascular volume which is more easy to estimate so by central venous pressure the other thing we need to do is we need to estimate the urinary sodium levels essentially both urinary sodium levels will be increased in both scenarios we will discuss it in a bit now coming to SIADH it usually happens in the first or second week following a head injury due to increased ADH levels which will lead on to water retention and what does this water retention do? This water retention will cause hyponatremia because of dilutional effect. Not only that, the serum will become hypoosmolar, that is diluted. Okay, so that is what is diluted. Then the third thing is there will be hypervolemia. Okay, so all this will happen. And ultimately, this will lead on to hyperosmolar urine that is concentrated urine so hyperosmolar urine or concentrated urine happens and the most important thing is since water is retained here we get a normal skin turgor that is there will be no signs of no external signs of dehydration so that is one of the very important differentiating factor between SIDH and CSW okay so the skin tiger will be normal and there will be no dehydration now coming to cere cerebral salt wasting syndrome it happens due to increased levels of ANP or BNP that is the natriuretic peptides and this will lead on to excretion of sodium lot of sodium is lost in urine so this is hyponatremia and again volume depletion happens because not only will sodium be lost sodium will take water also with it so the third thing that happens is you will get hypernatriuresis so hyponatremia because hypernatriuresis and volume depletion so this will lead on to a hyperosmolar urine. So sodium will be lost in urine. Okay, so sodium will be lost in urine. That is why it is hyperosmolar. Whereas in SIADH, the, there is concentrated urine. Hence it is hyperosmolar. So what are the differences between SIADH and cerebral salt wasting syndrome? First point and the most important is to measure the intravascular volume, which we can do it with the cere cere central venous pressure. So we know that in SIDH there is water retention and in cerebral salt wasting syndrome there is sodium and water loss. Keep this in mind always so we can differentiate them. Intravascular volume will be increased because of dilution and in cerebral salt wasting syndrome it is reduced. 
the other features we are going to discuss is dehydration then the body weight the changes to the body weight that happens the central venous pressure the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and finally the hematocrit so all these findings we have to know what is happening so since there is water retention there will be no dehydration if there is no dehydration and water is retained the body weight will be elevated central venous pressure will be elevated the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and the hematocrit both of them will be reduced whereas in cerebral salt wasting syndrome there will be dehydration body weight is reduced central venous pressure is reduced pulmonary capillary wedge pressure will be either normal or increased hematocrit will be increased okay so now the biochemical factors biochemical parameters between SIADH and cerebral salt wasting syndrome so here we are going to discuss about serum osmolarity serum protein concentration blood urea nitrogen and creatinine ratio serum uric acid levels of serum uric acid levels of serum sodium levels of urine sodium and urine osmolality osmolality oh, sorry osmolarity so serum osmolarity will be decreased because it is diluted in SADH similarly protein concentration will be reduced this blood urea nitrogen creatinine ratio again and serum uric acid levels also will be reduced serum sodium is reduced as you know it is hyponatremia urine sodium may be increased or normal and urine osmolality will be osmolarity will be increased meaning it is a concentrated urine in cerebral salt wasting syndrome the serum osmolality will be either increased or normal protein concentration will be increased blood urea nitrogen will be normal or increased serum uric acid levels will be normal again serum sodium is reduced because of loss urine sodium will be increased because more amount of sodium is increased and urine osmolality will be increased the fact to remember here is serum sodium and urine osmolality osmolarity the features will be very similar in both uh, cerebral salt wasting syndrome and sadh that's it thank you